Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back and uh, this is lecture number 44 and we will be talking about linear transformations and in particular we will also talk about the rank and nullity theorem for these linear transformations and also the kernel and image of uh, linear transformations. So, let me start with what is uh, linear mapping or linear transformation. So, here we talk about these two uh, vector spaces. So, x and y be two vector spaces and the mapping. Uh, f from uh, x to y is called a linear transformation or linear mapping if it satisfies the following two conditions. So, what are these conditions? For any two vectors u and v from this vector space x, if we apply this uh, transformation f on u plus v, this should be equal to uh, f u and plus f v. So, that is one conditions for uh, out of these two conditions this is one which uh, is required to to say that this is a linear transformation the second one for any scalar k here from the set of real numbers uh, and a vector and any vector u from this x this f should also satisfies that f of uh, the multiplication of this k scalar multiplication of this k to u so f k times u should be equal to k times f u so we have these two conditions uh, required for for the linearity one is this f u plus v must be equal to f u plus f v and the second condition we have that this map should also satisfies uh, that f k times u k is a scalar number k times u must be equal to k multiplied by f u. So, here two remarks one the two conditions given above. So, these two conditions which we have just discussed this f u plus v is equal to f u plus f uh, v and f k u is equal to this k times this f u and these two conditions can be combined uh, into one and as follows that f times this k 1 plus k 2 v is equal to k 1 f u uh, plus k 2 f v. So, here we are combining basically the two. So, one was this uh, with the addition of this u plus v which is already here uh, that f on k 1 u plus k 2 uh, v must be equal to f k 1 u and plus f k 2 uh, v. So, in the first step for example, we will think it as uh, k 1 u and then plus uh, this k 2 v. This is exactly the condition number 1 and the condition number 2 uh, gives now that this should be equal to k 1 f u and plus this k 2 uh, f v. So, both the conditions are satisfied one, uh, once this condition here uh, that uh, k uh, u plus k 2 v uh, on, on this f when we apply and if it is equal to k 1 f u and k plus k 2 f v then we can call that the given transformation is a linear transformation. So, again note that that for k is equal to 0. So, in the second condition for instance if we put k is equal to 0 that will give us that f so, 0 into u that is a property of the vector space this should be a 0 vector then. So, f of the 0 vector uh, must be equal to. So, here again we have the 0 into this f u. So, when we multiply uh, this uh, 0 to f u, f u is an element in this uh, vector space x and again this 0 into this element f u must give uh, us the 0 element. So, here uh, we are getting again this um, 0 uh, f 0 must be equal to 0. So, this f u is element of y. So, again the same thing should hold when we have this 0 and something uh, from this y. So, this should give again the 0 vector in this y. So, here f 0. So, that means that every linear map uh, takes the 0 uh, vector from this uh, domain x to the 0 uh, vector in this range y. 
So that's another important property which we can quickly look for uh, the vector spaces. That means this uh, f0 must uh, be equal to 0. So, 0 should map to the 0 vector in the uh, in the vector space y. So, we go through some of the examples where we do see this linear maps. So, first here let f uh, is a linear map here r 3 to r 3 with f x y z is equal to x y 0. So, here every element of this r 3 which is denoted by this x y z and it maps to this x y and the z becomes 0. So, it is a projection of of that point x y z to this x y plane. So, whether this map is a linear map or not we can verify this. So, we take two elements from this r 3. So, two, two members of this r 3 one is a b c and the other one we have taken this e a dash b dash and uh, uh, c dash. And now, the these two properties. So, the first property is this uh, that when we apply f on this u plus v this should give us f u plus f v and that we will check here. So, the f of u plus v that means here f uh, the u plus v will be the sum of these two two elements here two vectors. So, a plus a dash b plus b dash c plus c dash that is uh, exactly the u plus v here and now we want to see what is the f of this. So, again the definition as per the definition this third coordinate will be set to 0 that means, uh, this will be equal to a plus uh, a dash and this b plus b dash and the third uh, argument will be set to 0. So, that is what the how this mapping is defined. So, now we have uh, this uh, vector here again from r 3 because the map is from r 3 to r 3 and now we can uh, rewrite this vector as a sum of these two vectors the first one a b 0 and the second one a dash b dash and 0 because the sum of these two vectors is nothing but this a plus a dash and b plus b dash and the third element is 0. So, here this a b 0 is uh, is again as per the definition here is f of uh, u because f of u will be uh, again as per this definition when we take f of u that is uh, u is a b c. So, this will give a b 0. So, this is exactly here a b 0 which we can write down as f u and here this a, a dash b dash 0 it is nothing but the f v. So, what we have seen here that f of u plus v is equal to f u plus f v. So, the first condition of this linearity is satisfied and now we will check for the second one which is uh, also trivial in this case. So, for any scalar number this k we consider uh, this f of this k into u and as per the definition this k into u will be uh, just multiplied uh, the k will be multiplied to each a component of this a b c. So, this will be k a and this k b and k c. So, now we are getting here the f on this k u that means f on this k a k b k c element and as per the definition of uh, as per the definition of this linear map we will get uh, this as k a k b and and this uh, 0 here. So, again we will use the idea which was used earlier in terms of the addition now we will uh, use that out of this k a k b and 0 we can take this k outside this point uh, a b 0 and by doing so we are getting here the k times this a b uh, comma 0 and this is nothing but again the k times and the function of u. So, this is k times the function of u. So, what we have checked here again the second property that k f uh, when we apply on k u we are getting this k times the function value at u or the this map at u. So, here both the conditions f u plus v is equal to f u plus f u f v and also f times f uh, when uh, we apply on this k u we are getting k times f u. So, both the properties of the linear map is satisfy are satisfied and therefore, this given uh, map here which maps the point x y z to x y 0 it is a projection map and that is a linear map which we have just proved here. 
Okay, so another example we will take that uh, this function f is defined, the map is defined as uh, f x y when we apply on this x y we are getting x plus 1 y plus 1. Now, the question is whether this is linear map or it is not a linear map and this is clear from here because one of the properties of the linear map is that it always maps 0 to 0 and we have here in R 2 our 0 element is nothing but a 0 comma 0 that is the element in R 2. So, this f must map the 0 0 element to the 0 0 element uh, if it is a linear map that is the necessary condition uh, of this linear map, but what we observe here then when we apply this f on 0 0 what we are getting we are getting 1 comma 2. So, in this way this cannot be a linear map because it is not mapping 0 0 element to uh, 0 0 element, but it is mapping 0 0 element to 1 2 element which uh, cannot be a, a linear map. So, another very important example we will see that these matrices uh, are also like linear maps because of the reason we take any m cross n matrix and A is the transformation from this R n to x m by, by this uh, rule here that if we multiply A to this x, x is an element from this R n then we will get uh, element in in uh, in uh, a in r m. So, here the a is is like a map from this r n to r m because it is taking by this uh, definition here a x. So, our function is like a x. So, this a x is mapping from this x which is from r n to to y which is from r n uh, r m. So, if this A is M cross N matrix, then it maps element from R n uh, to, to one element in R m and this one can uh, see easily because if we consider here that is a A one matrix here of uh, order this M cross N. So, this is like A 1 1, A 1 2 and A 1 N, A 2 1, A 2 2 and so on A 2 N and then this m th row. So, a m 1, a m 2 and we have a m n at the last element. So, this a is a matrix of order this m cross n and if we uh, uh, consider this a x that means, this a uh, will be multiplied now by, by this x here. So, x 1 x 2 and x is from uh, r n that means, it has n components. So, x 1, x 2, x 3, x n. And now, if we discuss this uh, multiplication, so what will happen? This row will be multiplied to this column. So, we will get here, and then this will be multiplied to this, and so on. So, we will get these m rows. So, this is the mth, mth row, this is the first row. So, as a product here, we will get a vector from this Rm because this will have m component, and so this uh, vector will belong to will belong to R m. So, when we have a matrix of m cross n order and if we multiply a vector from R n. So, this a x will be a vector in this uh, R m space. So, all matrices of order this m cross n we can think as uh, a linear map. Why linear map? Because of the nice properties of the of such uh, of, of, of matrices. So, first what we have seen that this A x is nothing, but uh, it is it is mapping now the element this x which was from R n and it is giving us an element in this y uh, in this R m. So, it maps from R n to R m that is clear and these linear property the, the, those are two properties when we apply this A on u plus v. So, u and v those are the elements from this R n. So, when we apply a on this u plus v what we will get uh, this is the property of the matrix itself. So, a u plus a v and that is what we were looking for the linear map this is one of the properties which must satisfy for the linear map and the second one that the a times uh, lambda u. So, a times lambda u uh, should be equal to uh, the lambda times a u and that is another property of the matrix which we 
we can easily verify if we want. So, the both the properties of the linear mapping are satisfied for a matrix for a matrix of order m cross n. So, a every m cross n matrix maps and maps and, and these entries of uh, of these matrices are real of course then it maps an element from from x r n to uh, an element in r m so this is another important point which we will be exploring further in this lecture that these matrices are nothing but they are linear map so the example here for instance we see this f which maps the r 2 to r 3 and given by this uh, a relation that f when oh, it takes this s t s t is a point in r 2 and it provides here 2 s plus 3 t minus s plus 5 t and 4 s minus 3 t uh, an element in this r 3. So, uh, this f is a linear map and uh, that we have to check it and one way of checking would be that we take the two elements from R 2 and then see whether this f when applied on this uh, u plus v gives us f u plus f v and the second condition that f on lambda uh, u is equal to lambda times f u. So, we can check those two conditions separately on this map. The other possibility what we will uh, in fact look here that this f s t we can also write down here that s uh, from this first uh, <coughs> component we can take this out s and then we have 2 minus 1 and 4, 2 minus 1 and 4 and plus this t uh, we can take common and then we have 3 5 minus 3. So, this here addition of these two vectors is exactly the given uh, vector here which uh, this f maps this s t to this given vector. So, here we have exactly the same vector, but we have breaked into two, two vectors. And now, this uh, if, uh, if we recall the properties of the matrix which we can put this in the form of matrix vector multiplication because s is multiplied to this column here, t is multiplied to this column here and that is exactly the property of the matrix vector multiplication. So, if we put these two columns as the uh, first and the second column of a matrix and then this s t again uh, a, a column uh, vector there. So, that multiplication is exactly give uh, this s times this vector plus t times this vector meaning that we can write down this as this uh, matrix whose columns are these given vectors uh, 2 minus 1 4 and 3 5 minus 3 and this s t we can put again uh, as a column vector there. So, this is exactly when we look into this product here 2 times s plus 3 t that is the first member here minus s plus 5 t that is the second member and 4 s plus uh, minus this 3 t that is the third one. So, this given mapping is defined exactly by this uh, matrix uh, 2, min 2 3 minus 1 5 4 minus 3. So, this f the given map is nothing but this matrix here and then what we have seen that these matrices are linear maps. So, we do not have to check anything else because we can write down this as this uh, in terms of the matrix and therefore, this has to be a linear map. So, without that uh, fundamental uh, derivation of this uh, to show that this is a linear map, we have taken this way that uh, this we can represent as a matrix map and therefore, this f is a linear map because we have written in terms of the matrix and matrices are linear map. So, another uh, point here to be discussed that is uh, called the kernel and image of linear uh, mapping and this let f again be a linear map which maps the elements from x to the elements in y and the kernel f is defined as that is the definition of the kernel f is the elements from x elements from the x vector space x such that they map to the 0 element in y. So, this is the kernel here. So, we have uh, we have this vector space x, we have this vector space y and what is the kernel? We will uh, collect all these uh, points here in x and who 
if they map to this uh, a zero element in in y so then this set will be called the kernel of this mapping f so this is the definition of the kernel of f all the elements in x which map to the zero element in y naturally the zero element must be there because the zero must map to the zero uh, for the linear map so definitely the zero will be there in this uh, kernel but there can be many other elements than the zero elements in this uh, kernel here there is another one that's called the image image of f is defined as that the y the the elements from the vector space y uh, those elements where there exists a x in x for which f x is y. So, we are exactly this is the image which we uh, usually discuss or which we consider here. So, we, we will collect all only those elements of y uh, which are uh, the map of some elements from this x. Okay. So, with this two definitions the kernel f and the image f uh, we let us just look at the simple example which f x y z uh, this again it is a it is a projection map. So, this any element here in R 3 it maps to this uh, point in x y plane that is x y 0. So, what is the image f? So, image f what we are looking for the all the elements in y whose uh, pre image is there in x that means all the points is a b c in R 3 whose the third component is 0 because they are the candidates of the y and corresponding to when the c is 0 the corresponding element is also there in, in x and that is nothing but this a and b. So, here the image of this mapping is nothing but all the points a b c whose third component is 0 that means all the points a b 0 uh, for a and b this belongs to again the real number. So, this is the image here and when we have set here the all the points where this third component is 0 this is nothing but the x y plane. So, the image as, as, as we discussed already that this mapping is nothing but it maps the a point in this R 3 to the uh, to the x y plane and that is exactly the projection map we are talking about and therefore, this image is nothing but this x y plane because this maps the point to the x y plane only. So, the image is there in the x y plane. The kernel, the kernel all uh, are the, those points from x uh, whose uh, map is uh, 0, they map to the 0. So, here as per the definition of this linear map any point here x y z it maps to x y and 0, the third will be set to 0. So, we want all those elements uh, whose uh, who, who uh, th those elements in x whose map is as a 0 element. So, if we take a point here with a and b 0. So, a and b 0 then and when we apply the. So, the point is here that if we apply uh, this map where or to any element where we have taken this first 0 and the second component 0. So, this will be nothing but uh, this will be the 0 0 0 element. So, that is the 0 element in this R 3. So, we are looking for those uh, those points in, in, in this R 3 because their element uh, their image is nothing but the 0 element in Y. So, this will form the kernel of this of this uh, mapping and uh, this is exactly uh, the, the z axis because on the z axis the x is 0 and y is 0. So, the whole z axis will be mapped to map to this uh, 0 element uh, in R 3 and that is natural here because the z axis when we take the, the, the projection of the z axis that is nothing but the origin that is means a 0 element in R 3. So, here the image is the x y plane and the kernel of f is nothing but the z axis because the whole z axis is mapping to this origin and the image means uh, here uh, th that all the points in x y plane that is the image uh, of this uh, mapping. So, there is a nice theorem here that f uh, x to y be a linear mapping then the kernel of f 
So, this kernel of f and is a subspace of x and also image of f is a subspace of x. So, we are not going to formally prove uh, here uh, prove this here, but it is very simple as per the definition of the kernel and this image we can we can think uh, that they will form a subspace because the kernel was nothing but all the elements here which maps to 0. So, we have to see basically those closure properties of the subspace. So, if you take any two elements uh, and they map to the 0. So, their sum will also map to the 0. So, the sum this addition will be also also belong to the same uh, kernel here and similarly uh, for the image also we can consider exactly the exactly the same consideration. So, here the, the point is that this kernel and the image they form a subspace and there is another nice theorem which will be used later that suppose this x 1, x 2, x 3, x m span a vector space x and suppose this f is a linear map then their image of these uh, points here or these vectors from x which is span the vector space x then this f x 1, f x 2, f x m will also span will span the image f. So, that is a uh, that is a very nice point here if we know the vectors from this uh, space x uh, and we know that these vectors uh, span the vector space x and we know the uh, the mapping here f then this f x 1, f x 2, f x m they will uh, just uh, span the image f and the idea of the proof is very simple. So, if we take a point in the image f now and uh, there exist a x because this is a point in the image. So, there must exist a x in this vector space x such that this f x is equal to uh, y and then we take this x because uh, any element of this vector space x can be represented as a linear combinations of x 1, x 2, x 3, x m because these vectors span the vector space x. So, by taking this we, we have represented this x in terms of the x size that means, the linear combination of these x size and now we apply this uh, uh, linear map f on x which will give us the element y naturally. So, this f on x and due to the linearity of, of the map we can uh, take this f here uh, inside uh, th this uh, x size uh, because these are the constant that is the uh, uh, definition of the linear map. So, we have the f uh, alpha 1 uh, x 1 plus alpha 2 x 2 and so on will be uh, equal to alpha 1 and f 1 x 1 plus alpha 2 uh, and f 1 x 2 and so on. So, this is because of the linearity and now what we see that this y element we have written as a linear combination of this x f x m and this is exactly that any element y in the vector space y we can write as a linear combination of these vectors f x i. Therefore, these vectors f x i will span the uh, image uh, f. So, here the kernel and image of the matrix mapping. So, because these matrix are also linear maps. So, if we consider just quickly this uh, simple example of this three rows and and four columns and we take for instance the usual basis here E 1, E 2, E 3, E 4 from R 4 these are the standard basis of R 4 which we have already discussed before. Then as per the previous theorem we know that A E 1, A E 2, A E 3, A E 4 will span the image uh, of A. So, now we compute this A e 1, A e 2 what are these numbers here. So, if we take A and this E 1 we will get nothing but uh, A 1 will be the first and then we multiply here will be B 1 and then C 1 that will be the A e 1, A e 2, A e 3 and A e 4. So, these vectors here A 1, P 1, C 1, A 2, B 2, C 2 and so on A 4, B 4, C 4 in R 3 these are the vectors in R 3 these are the vectors in image and we know from the previous theorem that these vectors here will these vectors will span the image. So, we know already uh, the spanning vector of this image uh, R 3 which is in R 3. So, image of this A. 
So, what are these? These are precisely the columns here. These are the columns of this given uh, matrix. So, the image is nothing but image is nothing but uh, the uh, column the, the column space the column space is exactly uh, the span of these uh, these columns that is the column space we have already discussed and what we have observed that the image is nothing but the span of these columns so thus the image a is precisely the column space of a so when we talk about the the matrices here the column space is nothing but the uh, they will span the column space is nothing but the image of a similarly the kernel because the kernel will be all the points here whose uh, map is to zeros that means we are looking for all the all the points x here in 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 r4 and whose map to the zero in r3 so that means what we are looking exactly we are looking for the null space of this Null space of this matrix A because that was the definition of the null space that all the all the uh, I mean the solution of this system of homogeneous equation gives us the the null space. So here this null space in the form of the kernels is the same as the null space of A that's the kernel of the uh, matrix mapping. The last one here the rank and the nullity of a linear map. So uh, if we remember the image a is the is the column space of a and then the dimension of the column space when we have discussed the rank of the matrix so that was the dimension of the column space that was the rank there so here in terms of the linear map the rank of a linear map will be the dimension of the image of f so image of f will be the rank so this is a more general definition of the rank which uh, the in, in case of the matrix that is a special case and we have separately discussed the rank concept of the matrix. So, the rank of the matrix was the dimension of the column space, but here we have the more general terminology that is called the image of the mapping f. So, this kernel f is nothing but the dimension of the image f. Similarly, the kernel a was the null space of a and here again this nullity which we uh, call the the dimension of the null space so that is the nullity which we have discussed already before so the nullity is nothing but the dimension of the kernel so these two again we have the two more definitions about the kernel which is more general than the definition of the rank we have discussed for matrices so here the rank of f is the dimension of the image of f and nullity is nothing but the dimension of the kernel of f and there is a theorem that let x be a vector space of finite dimension then and let this f be a linear map then this rank plus nullity is equal to dimension of x. So, this rank nullity theorem we have also discussed for matrices where rank plus nullity was uh, was the number of variables n which is here in this case that is uh, because this a maps from r n to r m. So, that is exactly the dimension of this. Uh, this domain here the dimension of x. So, the rank plus nullity is always the dimension of x that is a more general result than what we have for the matrices. Coming to the conclusion here. So, we have discussed the linear map and uh, to, to prove the linear map we just need to apply this f on this k 1 u plus k 2 v and if we get the k 1 f u plus k 2 f v then we call that the given map is the linear map. And what we have also seen that these matrices are also linear map and if matrix is of order m cross n then they map the elements of R n to the elements of R m. And this image of uh, A is nothing but the column space of A and this image the kernel of this uh, matrix this linear uh, mapping A is nothing but the, uh, the null space of A. So, these are the references used here and thank you for your attention.